Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Everyone checking in on cryptocurrency. It's been a wild one since we last talked. We did get that blow off top. I'll only take partial credit because it didn't play out exactly as I was anticipating it would, but certainly prepared for that big time sell off and profited a good bit on oversold bounces, which I'll go over. So still got some echo here as this room is still significantly empty as I'm moving things in and doing all that fun stuff. But Bitcoin is now looking at daily consolidation and we're testing the daily exponential support and anything above 8,919 is just a healthy daily higher low. So this is what happens when you have extremely emotional markets and you see huge moves up, you get big time pullbacks as well. And at this point we pulled back almost 25% on Bitcoin. So I am personally in the middle of some trades as well. I'll go over that in just a moment. But first things first, what did the top look like? It was a bit different. It was not the kind of shoot up move where I was looking for it to happen in a, the span of maybe 20, 30 minutes with one last push up and then an all out collapse. This was here, an inability to break resistance and then the all out collapse. So if you look at it on the four hour time frame, it fits the criteria of what I was saying. But again, it's just the time frame that I did get wrong. On the four hour time frame, we saw a thousand plus push up and then we saw a 2000 push down. And that is the climax blow off top that we so often see in these emotional markets. So what I was doing for that oversold bounce, and I actually was in a, a bull trade before that because after I made the video, I was confident that this isn't our top yet. And so I entered on five minute consolidation. And you know what, I'm not even gonna go into that trade. Too much to talk about in terms of bounces. So I got stopped out after in profit on that trade that I entered after making the video. And the point I wanted to make on that was I had the confidence to get in that trade because of making the video. The video allowed me to give my analysis, get out of my head, lay everything out clearly that I was looking for. And then I said, okay, well, I got a trade opportunity here. I'm expecting further upside. And I made an entry and we got upside. And that was a profitable trade because of my analysis. If I didn't make a video at that point in time, I probably wouldn't have entered that trade. So just uh, a note to get out of your head, whether it's, you know, make your own videos for yourself for technical analysis or write things down. It definitely helps in my opinion. So here's the dump. And this is, you don't wanna be placing bid orders on a blow off top in my opinion, because we have no idea how extreme it's gonna be. So I was sitting here in all cash and fortunately I was at the computer watching this happen. And the most notable part of the dump for me is that Coinbase was $800 lower than everybody else. And why that makes me confident, more confident, is because I know that the arbitrage bots are gonna be buying with me. They're on my team. The arbitrage bots are gonna be buying Coinbase, Bitcoin, and then trying to sell on the exchanges that are still $800 higher. So I know that those algos are going to kick in. So as soon as we broke 12,000, this is the kind of scenario where I am market buying in and I'm limit order scaling out. And I keep an eye on the order books the whole time that I'm doing this. And someone asks, you know, how do you know when to enter? And everything just happens so fast that it's very clear that I was in my flow. I wasn't thinking about anything. I wasn't watching RSI. I was just staring at the order book and executing a game plan that I didn't have established. I was just going with it really fast. And that tells me that it's a lot to do with experience. And really it just kicked in 2017 mode where those oversold bounces in early 2018, where those oversold bounces had significant gains. So I ended up trading three flips and I held the trades a total of eight minutes. And I made more in those eight minutes of holding those positions than I did in the last three or four bull moves up the last three or four days on the bull move up. And the reason is position sizing. I'm not gonna be confident going all in when we're that extended on the daily time frame, and I know how it's likely to end, but I am gonna be confident when I'm in my element and using my edge as a trader, which is oversold bounces, and I'm much more comfortable going all in on those oversold bounces than I would be on that uptrend. It seems a little bit odd and maybe it is, but it's just the way that has proven in the two years of trading cryptocurrency that I should keep doing that because it's working. So for me, I made an entry. I was just patiently watching. I saw the break of 12,000, the psychological break. 
As soon as 12,000 broke, I market bought one third of my stack and got filled and the bounce happened shortly after. And then I just scaled out and I ended up getting, you know, a solid 400 plus dollar move on that scale out. And then I was shocked to see that they were going to give us another reload. And I did the exact same thing, or actually not the exact same thing, because this time I market bought, I got filled at 12,200. And then I did the second third at 11,700. And then things slowed down and I did the third order in the 11,700. So I had a great average of about 11,900. And I did the same thing. I just scaled out on this initial bounce, locked in those profits. And then I did it one more time here, looking for just another little flip. I entered at, so this video is gonna be pieced together a little bit. I got a lot of stuff going around, around me. So the third entry that I did was 11,550 and then I sold 11,899. And on the whole, if you looked at what my average was and where I scaled out, my average exit price, I left a lot of money on the table. But when you're in this kind of environment and you have that profit in front of you and you're playing against the trend, I'll just continuously lock that in, lock that in, lock that in, and it ends up adding up. So that was my oversold bounce play. And then from there, I just stopped watching it and went about my day or went to bed or whatever, and was all cash and just patiently waiting for an opportunity for where I'm gonna be looking for the daily higher low to form. So that's potentially happening now. And if we look at Bitcoin on the five minute time frame now, I've been scaling in. And the reason I'm scaling in is because the four hour time frame has not seen any bounce. This is extreme. If we saw a little bear flag and then a lower low, I'd be less aggressive than I am right now. Another reason is the daily 12 period exponential support is a visual guide and the bulls are gonna try and hold that. And we're currently holding that at this point. So I'm just looking for an hourly trend change for the first time since the all time high. We had a little hourly equilibrium, it broke bare, weak bounces. So I'm looking for an hourly trend change to indicate the first shift in momentum back to the bulls. Another reason why I'm scaling in again now is the hourly RSI hitting oversold for the first time. So all these things adding up are shaping why I'm making an entry right now. And I'm doing so cautiously. My initial entry was on the 11,000 break. I entered at 10,900 average and I scaled out half because I saw a 15 minute bear flag was likely. The bounce did not get any bull volume following through and I wanted to be protected. So I exited half and I had a position at 10,900. I made another entry on this leg down at 10,400. So my average was then 10,750 or so. And then I just exited half at break even yet again. So I currently have a position that is in the green and I'm very comfortable with that. And it's a fairly small position relative to how much cash I have available if this is not the bottom because I'm watching for the potential of a $10,000 flush and it wouldn't shock me if that happened. So I'm gonna keep cash in case it does. If we see an hourly bear flag or just an hourly lower high and we drop down to a lower low, I will be watching for that 10,000 flush and I will have a lot of cash ready to play it as again, the four hour time frame is so extended that if we broke 10,000, I would still be comfortable. So I'm actively managing my current positions and just patiently waiting to see the every time frame. We just changed the five minute trend and it was actually a five minute falling wedge. Let's look at that real quick. You know to look for a falling wedge when you see lower highs and lower lows with no follow through. So whenever I see that happen, I then start to try and draw that wedge. And it was better on a different time frame here. Let's see the two minute. So if I adjusted this drawing a little bit, the two minute time frame here showing us this wedge. And again, 10,450 was support. We broke it by $120, not a lot of follow through and then dip buying. And that was a, a clear bull break of this falling wedge pattern. So that was another reason that I was looking to make entries as well. So currently in a profitable position and being very patient, if this bounce gets going and this is the real momentum shift and we change the hourly trend and we make a move, I would be looking for a four hour lower high Again, just going time frame to time frame, change the trend on the five minute, look at the 15 minute and determine the most likely scenario. Change the 15 minute, do it on the hourly, then do it on the four hour. I'd be looking for a four hour lower high in the upper $11,000 range, at least. That would be a conservative target. A weak four hour bounce, in my opinion, would be to the upper 11,000 range. And with the position size that I currently have, that would be very worthwhile. I will add more if we keep dropping down, but I'm not gonna be adding into strength on this bounce because I've got a position and I'm comfortable enough. So now we will pause a bit and then go and look at up-to-date action and then I'll start uploading because I don't want to you know, start the, the coverage of what's going on right now on all the other names if I'm going to have to take a 20-minute break. So I'll be right back.
So the Bitcoin bounce changed the five minute trend at this point, which means zoom out to the 15 minute chart. We've got the 15 minute exponential resistance. If we change the 15 minute trend, we zoom out to the hourly chart and look at the hourly exponential resistance. So we know the zoom out game if you've been following this channel for a while, and that's what we're in right now. That's the mode that we're in. We need to change the hourly trend for the first time since the all time high, and then we'll look for that four hour lower high. And that's the bounce that I'm looking to play. So comfortable. So checking in on ETH, ETH had a significant pullback as well. The daily higher lows have broken. That's a distinct difference between the two. The next support level is down at 261, and this is a sizable pullback. So I wanna see what the weekly looks like. Anything over 226 is a weekly higher low. That's the most important support level for me. So the bulls need to hold that level. And I expect that we're going to see the same thing that happens on Bitcoin happen on Ethereum, whether or not it's stronger or weaker. We'll look at ETH and BTC just a second here and decide. But same thing, hourly bounce. Need to change the hourly trend for the first time since the high for it to be meaningful. And we're just looking for a lower high compared to 312 essentially. And the exponential resistance will be our guide. So here's the ETH BTC chart. And as I've been saying, this chart doesn't mean anything to me until we see four hour trend changes. And you could say we had a little four hour trend change here, but with all these big upper wicks, that tells me that the 27 to 28 range is where I wanna be looking for the bulls to make a notable shift in momentum. It is a bullish reversal candlestick trying to form on the daily. It's an inside bar. How this inside bar breaks tomorrow is going to dictate how the bounce plays out, whether Ethereum is going to be stronger or weaker than Bitcoin. If this bounce on the daily gets going and we see another daily exponential resistance test, that's when Ethereum can take the lead as far as the bounce gains go. If it breaks bearish, then Bitcoin is still king. Litecoin on the pullback, and you gotta feel sorry for the Litecoin fundamental bulls that are only in Litecoin. Again, diversification is so important with whatever you're trading, and the last week must have been brutal for Litecoin to go nowhere and then dump with everybody else. So Litecoin is now pulling back on the weekly. Bearish reversal doji confirmed. Anything above 97.05 is a weekly higher low. That's a must hold level. Again, we saw the long-term trend change on the weekly time frame for LTC BTC. That's very notable for me. And that makes me less interested in Litecoin for the foreseeable future. Here on the four hour time frame, bulls have to get over 0.011 for it to be meaningful on this bounce. And then the same thing, the daily time frame will look for a bounce. Everybody's watching right now is are these Bitcoin profits going to go into altcoins? Because we're anticipating Bitcoin is going to hit the alt, the high of 2019, find its low, which hopefully has already been found. Although if it does break 10,000 and get that flush, I'll certainly play it again. But once we find that range on Bitcoin, I'm going to anticipate trading within that Bitcoin range for days, for three or four days. And during that sideways trading, that's when everybody's going to be looking for profits to potentially go to these altcoins. So you better believe that that's what we're going to be watching for and see if that is the shift in where capital is going. And if that is the case, then we will see notable bounces on these daily timeframes on ETH BTC and LTC BTC. XRP, another name that saw a clear bear break. So high, low, lower high. And as soon as you break 446, that's your exit signal and that's your go bearish signal. And the bears have seen significant follow through. We dropped down and broke 1250. So what I was saying on Bitcoin is you don't want to be going short while we're in a daily uptrend. Well, that's the loss of the daily uptrend on Ripple. So that is the scenario where you can be comfortable going short. So now looking back at the weekly time frame for XRP, still a weekly uptrend. Bulls have to hold 3699. And I mean, compared to everybody else on the weekly chart, it's just not impressive compared to Litecoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin in 2019. Binance pulling back further. So weekly chart is consolidation underway. Not yet. Weekly inside bar. The bulls need to hold 2871. That's going to be a key level. And if 2871 breaks, it will be the first very notable momentum shift we've seen since $4. So that is going to be very important. Losing the weekly uptrend means we zoom out to the monthly and we look for a monthly higher low to form. And with what this monthly chart looks like, we can absolutely see monthly consolidation. So just be aware that obviously Binance is not gonna go up forever and monthly consolidation, if it's healthy, you know, if we hold 25 on a monthly pullback, that's just fine long-term, but just be prepared. If we lose this weekly uptrend, monthly consolidation is underway. 
And we are not in a downtrend yet on the daily. We haven't even lost the daily uptrend yet. I would say anything above 29.81 keeps the bulls in a daily uptrend. It would be a, a head and shoulders pattern here. If the bears are going to get any follow through, it would be the left shoulder, the head. If we hold this support level and bounce, we'll look for a lower high to form. And then rolling over would be when the weekly uptrend would be at risk. If we confirm a daily downtrend with a lower high and lower low. So that's where we stand overall. We'll see how this Bitcoin bounce goes. Again, the most important time frame for me into tonight over the next 6-12 hours is the hourly chart. We have to change that trend for the first time since the high of 2019 for that to be meaningful. And when we get that, that's when we're going to look for some follow through on the 4 hour time frame. Keep your eyes peeled on the BTC pairing charts. There may be opportunity as soon as we establish our range because once we hit our bottom on Bitcoin and once I make this play, I'm not going to be interested in Bitcoin nearly as much when we're trading within its defined range and doing the equilibrium thing. And as we know, equilibriums happen after big spikes in volatility and new price ranges being discovered. So we're going to be looking for the potential. Essentially, what I'd like to see happen is an hourly trend change on Bitcoin and leading to a four hour equilibrium, leading to a bounce, ideally into the mid 12,000s. If we're going to get some meaningful follow through. So we'll have our high, low, we'll look for a bounce into the mid to low 12,000s, and then we look for a higher low. And because this is on the four hour time frame, this kind of equilibrium, if this is what we get, could play out into July, essentially. So again, this sideways action is when we're gonna be paying attention very much so to the alts to see if they do see some life. I appreciate you watching. And end of the video here is some ducks and geese. I forget if I posted this one on the crypto video yet. And just a general reminder, just had, I'm dealing with a bunch of local um, contractors and things like that and just had my HVAC serviced and asked the guy if he could send me a review that I could leave him and he was pretty pumped about that. So that's clearly something that people don't do but just a little review and giving someone good props to help them in their job can go a long way. I've gave that message many times over the last four years at the chart guys and every time I do it, I can tell that it's meaningful and it's not something people do by their reactions. So let's all do that. Do good things. See you soon. It's a party. It's a bird party.